global cost of living crisis is as big a challenge to, I don't know if we, are we okay? Yeah. The global cost of living crisis is as big a challenge to the people and businesses across Scotland as the COVID pandemic. And it has to be treated with the same seriousness by both of our governments. In a time of emergency, governments must focus on what they need to do rather than what they wish to do for political purposes. They need to govern for the whole of the country and not just for their supporters. Unfortunately, this programme for government, which we've just heard from the SNP Green administration, falls woefully short of rising to the big challenges we all face here in Scotland, across the UK and around the world. Now, I join the First Minister in congratulating our new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. But while that, but while that Prime Minister has changed... But, but while the Prime Minister has changed, Sadly, it's the same First Minister repeating her old mantra of directing blame elsewhere and seeking grievance with the UK government rather than working to help people in Scotland. What we need is both governments to tackle the cost of living crisis together, working to ensure that we can help individuals, families, communities and businesses across Scotland. Now, I've discussed this with the new Prime Minister and we know there are plans ready to be rolled out in the coming days that will help to alleviate the problems people are facing right now. But sadly, the SNP are not holding up their side of the deal. When Scottish people are struggling with their bills, instead of appropriate support and assistance from the Scottish Government, they get another unwanted bill from the SNP and the Greens, an indirect 2 bill. And that is unacceptable at a time when people are struggling. This SNP government is prioritising their planning for a vote in separation, which they know will divide Scotland at exactly the point we should be coming together and uniting. A vote that's a wrong priority at the worst possible time. Now, ahead of this programme for government, the Scottish Conservatives published our own plan for the year ahead in Parliament and focused on five key priorities. On supporting families and households through the cost of living crisis working with businesses to grow our Scottish economy, rebuilding our public services after the damage of the COVID pandemic, empowering every community to recover, and building a better Scotland for the next generation. Those are the priorities that people across Scotland are looking for now. And in a time of national crisis, they are the right priorities for the whole of Scotland, the right priorities at a time of national emergency. For the last three years, when this Parliament has debated the programme for government, it has been with the backdrop of national challenges unlike any that we've seen before. In 2020, the COVID pandemic remained a threat with no certainty over how it was going to end. In 2021, we faced the difficulty of recovering from that pandemic, of getting our economy moving and our public sector delivering the services we all rely on day in, day out. And today, there is the global cost of living crisis one that is having an impact on every single household in Scotland, with higher energy bills and everyday costs we normally take for granted. A global cost of living crisis, caused in large part by the first full-scale war between two sovereign countries in Europe since the Second World War. The last two years have not been normal times. They have been a period of emergency. And make no mistake, this year is no different this cost of living crisis is one of the biggest threats to livelihoods in our lifetimes. It demands our governments put country above party. They must put normal politics to one side and rise to the occasion. They must make hard choices about putting their own... Well, well I'm very happy to take interventions. I know that the First Minister prepares statements where no one can intervene, but if any SNP member wants to intervene, rather than heckling, please do. No, nope, they've not been given the script from the front bench, I don't think. Because, as I was saying, they must put normal politics to one side and rise to the occasion. They must make hard choices and they must govern for the whole country, not just their supporters. So it's with that weight of national expectation that we assess this programme for government that the SNP and the Greens have put forward today. And unfortunately, it doesn't deliver on Scotland's needs. Throughout the summer, and again today we heard it from the First Minister, they've only sought to point the finger of blame at Westminster. 
Yet when the time came for them to set out their own plan, as we could have done today, they've been Ted's instead told Scots to wait a couple of weeks and tune in later for an emergency budget. Where was the proposed rapid spending review that John Swinney was carrying out over the summer? Why can't the SNP government announce major support today? Surely it's been able to find something in John Swinney's inquiries over the summer. Uh, again, I'll, I'll give way to the Cabinet Secretary if he'll... Very, very, happy to, uh, very happy to respond to Mr Ross's point. Uh, the government is wrestling, as the First Minister has set out, with uh, a budget settlement that was agreed when inflation was 2%. Inflation is now 10%. Hence the emergency statement I will give to Parliament tomorrow and the extensive opportunity that will be available for members to question me on its contents tomorrow. And I think any rational individual would understand that it's sensible for us to wait to see what decisions a new United Kingdom government might take to jeopardise our budget, because that is a very real threat that we face before we take the measures to support individuals within our responsibilities. In addition, of course, to the marvellous news about the Scottish Child Payment, the only payment to support families in poverty around the country, which this government has today delivered. The Scottish Child Payment was part of the proposals that the Scottish Conservatives put forward. An increase in the Scottish Child Payment, of course, where would we get the funding on from is often the cry. Well, £20 million that John Swinney is still squirrelling away for an independence referendum next year. And all this uh, in the statement today from the First Minister and in the programme for government is re-announcements and future promises that we know they often fail to deliver. From the same government that said a £37 billion pound package of support from the UK government worth £1,200 to more than a quarter of Scottish households was not enough. Really, this is the investment that this UK government have made and will be continuing to make going forward. We on this side of the chamber have been absolutely clear that as the crisis has increased, so has the need for the UK government to do more to help those who can least afford it. And I look forward to the package of support uh, that is being outlined by the new Prime Minister and her cabinet in the coming days. Yet I think Scots expect the same level of action from their devolved government as well. However, um, this is another area where the document falls short of the moment that we are currently discussing. It's clear that at a time when the SNP government should be focused on the... I'm quite happy to give way, First Minister, please. Douglas Ross, so please continue. I thought the First Minister was chuntering away, so... Well, there we go. Well, with with First apologies, Minister. Presiding Officer, I was just commenting from a sedentary position, so I apologise to you, uh, wondering when Douglas Ross was going to say anything remotely of substance. <laughs> Can I, can I, members, members, this is our first day back um, following recess, and I would be very grateful if all members could remind themselves of the Code of Conduct, which requires that members treat one another with courtesy and respect at all times. And can I now move back to Mr Ross? Oh, uh, listening to your guidance, uh, Presiding Officer, I will just respectfully say I thought the same for 31 minutes as the First Minister uh, set out her programme for government. Because what we have is a government that's focused on the national interest and a programme for government that is packed full of political priorities, yep. ploughing ahead with their plans for a national care service a £1.3 billion bureaucratic overhaul of social care when the service is at breaking point and care staff on low wages are struggling with rising costs, refusing to back our North Sea oil and gas industry and rejecting a new generation of nuclear power stations, despite energy supply being a key driver behind the cost of living crisis. The SNP and the Greens would rather import American gas and Russian oil than support jobs and communities here in Scotland. And, of course, the First Minister got to her plans for a second independence referendum, which she plans to hold in October next year, at a time when Scots are struggling with their bills. And looking to this chamber for leadership, the SNP will have us debating another referendum bill. During the COVID pandemic, the First Minister realised that it wasn't the time for another vote on independence and abandoned her plans. How can she honestly say 
that the challenges we face today are not worthy of the same response. Her own government's figures last month show that being part of the United Kingdom is worth £12 billion in additional public spending every year here in Scotland. That is a resource that can only help us during this crisis, yet it's one that the SNP are intent on getting rid of. And instead of trying to unite this country to face this big challenge, this SNP government is giving precedence on planning for a vote on separation, which they know, they must know, will only divide Scotland all over again. The wrong priority at the worst possible time. Once again, the demands of this nationalist movement have been set above those of the public and all of Scotland will be poorer as a result of it. Yet this document is even uh, a failure by its government's own measure. Going into this debate, Scottish Conservatives had a look over last year's programme for government document, which the First Minister stood up and delivered and says, this is what we're going to do over the next 12 months. And 26, 26 of those commitments have not been delivered. And even worse, many of those commitments would have helped struggling families right now. The First Minister mentioned about the rollout of free school meals to P6s and 7s. She said the same last year. We were promised a rollout of free school lunches for every primary school pupil. So it's just a repetition of that. A minimum national allowance for foster and kinship care. That was announced last year. What happened? The creation of new benefits in the pension age winter heating assistance and a low income winter heating assistance. All promised last year, none of them delivered. So surely Scotland needs a national government that will focus on these issues rather than a nationalist campaign group instead. Now, the SNP and the Greens are failing to put their party politics to one side in the face of these massive challenges that we're fa uh, facing. They are failing to pause their priorities to focus on the national interest. And they're failing to rise to the challenge of this crisis and be bold in their action, which the public expect. Those are the tests for this programme for government, and no one can credibly argue that they're being met by the commitments in this document today. So we, as the Scottish Conservatives, have published our own plan for the year ahead in this Parliament. We should be scouring budgets to look for every penny that can be found for the Cost of Living Support Fund to help the poorest households and communities going forward. If £20 million can still be coughed up for another independence vote, surely we can scrape a little bit further in the barrel for more important public resources. At the same time, the Scottish Government should be using its tax levers that it has to pass on the UK tax cuts to Scottish workers. They are already the highest taxed anywhere in the United Kingdom, and at these difficult times, we should be doing everything we can to allow them to keep more of their own money in their pockets to better support themselves and spend in their local community, helping the local economies. It, Deputy Presiding Officer, these are priorities that I believe should be in an SNP programme for government. I will give way a uh, Very briefly, Deputy First Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I wonder if Mr Ross would place on the record whether he supports the higher, uh, the pay deals that have been agreed that incur greater cost for the government beyond the expectations of public sector pay policy. I, I just put on record I was glad, given the mess that had been made of Glasgow, of Edinburgh, of towns and cities across Scotland, the First Minister finally found time in her busy schedule to get involved and get round the table. It should have happened weeks ago. And if she had less appearances at the fringe, she might have been able to get a resolution far earlier. So, presiding officer, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give way, or maybe the First Minister wants uh, to say something in the uh, chamber rather than to the host of celebrities she was speaking to. Uh, uh, very briefly, Deputy First Minister. Very briefly. I think, uh, I think Mr. Ross needs to look at his gratuitous comments a little bit, Presiding Officer, in, uh, in what he's muttering just now. I'd like an answer to my question, which is Does Mr. Ross support the pay deals which are higher than 2% because they incur higher costs for the government to resolve? Yes or no? Douglas Ross? support rewarding our public service workers, our council workers, some of the lowest paid anywhere in the country who had to go on strike because they were being abandoned by this SNP government. And it was only when the Edinburgh Fringe finished, it took the festival to end before Nicola Sturgeon thought, actually, I better do something about it. As I was saying, presiding officer, I, I, I think, think I've given Mr. Ross time, really needs to bring his remarks uh, to a conclusion. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ross. I will bring my remarks to a, a conclusion. 
Uh, I think giving away, giving away to the Deputy First Minister three times is, is very generous. I look forward to more robust debate uh, going forward. So I would just like to say the priorities of the Scottish Conservatives reflect the national interests and fully focus on the big challenges that Scotland faces. There will always be disagreements in this chamber. That's natural. That's politics. But this programme for government was a chance to move Scottish politics on from the usual yeah. punch and duty constitutional wrangling, yeah. which we've just seen a bit of, to rise to the challenge to be the national parliament that we should aspire to be. And in that context, this programme for government from the SNP and the Greens can only be viewed as another missed opportunity.